What's cracking, peeps? Happy Saturday. Team Money up in the heezy. Um, you guys might be wondering why I'm here. I did mention last video that I was going to be gone this weekend uh, on a trip to North Carolina, which did not happen. Unfortunately, my flight. I have the worst luck in the world. Like, this is literally the second time I had planned to go away on this trip. I think the first one was in February or something, and there was a snowstorm here, so I couldn't get out. Now, the issue, I was supposed to leave yesterday. The issue was that there were tornado warnings in uh, Guilford County, where, I'm supposed to, where I was supposed to be going in Greensboro, North Carolina. So, I couldn't go, uh, really because I didn't feel like waiting around in the airport all day. I mean, I guess I could have gone, but I would have literally been waiting uh, because both flights got delayed. So I would have been sitting around in an airport for like 15 hours uh, just to get to my destination and have to leave um, on Monday. So I'm just going to rebook it. Luckily, I bought insurance um, for my flight. And um, I'm just going to go sometime, I think, in June, June 22nd, actually. So uh, that's why I'm here, obviously, and I got a huge package in the mail today from Diabolic DVD, and then I got a Kino Lorber. There's a Kino Lorber sale. I think, I don't know if it's still going on, but it was like last week. Um, so I purchased like five or six movies from that, because they're, Kino sales are the best because you get stuff for like $9.99. It's just dirt cheap. Um, so yeah, I bought a few movies from them, and then I bought uh, one movie from Severin, and one movie from wild eye uh from amazon so let's get into it i'll do the on uh the stuff that i have open first and then i have this box from diabolic which i'll do last because it's quite a few goodies in there all right so first up we'll go with uh the wild eye release this is the lone dvd actually there might be a dvd in the diabolic package but this is la lorona la loro lo lon lo oh god it's spanish La Lorona, Lorona Curse, La Lorona Curse. I know I'm saying it wrong. Um, not to be confused with the movie that's in theaters right now. It's called, I think, The Curse of La Lorona. But this is La Lorona Curse, which is different in Wild Eye. Um, I was confused at first because I didn't know what was going on. It's not often that like two movies with very similar titles come out. One direct-to-video, one in the theaters at the same time. So I didn't know what was going on, but come to find out this is a Wild Eye uh, low-budget film, whereas the other one is a theatrical release. I'm sure it's got a bigger budget, probably a better film, but um, way more cliche, I think, along the lines of like The Conjuring and Jump Scary and stuff like that. But we'll see. I haven't really heard anything about the one in theaters. I have not watched this one yet either, but this is uh, um, directed by Damir Katik. It's a Wild Eye releasing release, obviously, and it's just basically, uh, it plays on the old, I guess La Llorona Curse is like an old urban legend, um, which I'm kind of interested in. I actually hadn't really heard much about this story in general prior to both of these movies being released, but from what I gather, television crew goes to this place where haunted happenings have been said to have occurred, and all hell breaks loose. They summon the ghost of La Llorona, and they start dying. But, I mean, very cliche, very run-of-the-mill. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how this uh, pales in comparison... Ugh, in comparison... Ugh, ugh, pales in comparison to the one that's in theaters right now. Um, we'll see. Uh, but it looks to be very low-budget, very shot-on-video-esque. Or not shot-on-video, but... Um, you know what I mean? Handheld. Um... <sighs> drawing a blank on what's what that's called um but anyways Blair Witch esque I guess but uh so yeah we'll see La Curse of La Rorona La Lorona La Lorona um whoa yeah so now we're gonna get into the Kino Loba stuff maybe this lubricant will make me speak smoother all right Five titles from Kino Loba. The first one up, we have 1988's The House on Carroll Street. Now, judging by the title of this film, I thought it was definitely like a 60s film noir, but it's actually not. Starring Jeff, K Jeff Daniels and Kelly McGinnis. McGillis, sorry. Uh, 1988's The House on Carroll Street. Um, don't really know much about it, but I'm trying, you know, I collect Kino and I'm beefing up my collection. And like I said, these sales 
I just pick stuff out that semi interests me, interests me that I don't have. Um, from what I understand, it's a, it's about a woman who goes against the American court system or something like that. Some some dude, uh, race Salwin. Um, she refuses to cooperate in the House of Un-American Activities Committee chairman with the House Un-American Activities Committee chairman, Ray Salwin, and she's blacklisted and eventually fired. Um, and she enlists the help of an FBI agent to uncover um, Salwin's nefarious plot to smuggle Nazi war criminals into the U.S. And... Yeah, so she enlists the help of Jeff Daniels, who is an FBI agent, to bring her, to help bring her, to help bring Salwin to justice, uh, before he brings an end to them. So, also stars the great Jessica Tandy, co-stars in this homage classic Hollywood film noir. So it is a film noir. It's from Orion Pictures, but it's from the '80s. So, cool. Next up, we have Cabo Blanco, not to be confused with Casablanca keep wanting to say that when I see this, but this is actually a pretty cool cast. You got Chucky Bronson, Jason Robards, and Dominique Sandra. Uh, basically, three different people are thrown into this. It's like a game, I guess, and uh, let's see. Um, uh, we have the expatriate, played by Charles Bronson. We have the ex-Nazi-seeking Oblivion, Gunther Berkroff, Jason Robards, and um, let's see, Marie Clara Sandry, the beautiful French woman in search of her missing lover. Against the explosive background heightened by all the hopes, fears, greed, and confusion of the th post-wars, the three are thrown into an unforgettable tale of romance, adventure, and intrigue. Wonderfully directed by the great Jay Lee Thompson, who did Cape Fear, which is awesome, featuring a stellar cast, also including Fernando Rey, Simone Mac. Corkendale, McCorkendale, uh, and some other people that I'm not really familiar with, but James Booth. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of them actually. Uh, Aldo Sombrell from Navajo Joe, uh, Gil Gilbert Roland from Barbarossa, Barbarossa. Uh, so yeah, cool. Um, I love anything with Charles Bronson in it, so we'll see. Kind of dig that cover artwork too. It reminds me of Clue. So that's Cabo Blanco. Next up, we have a film from the great Alfred Hitchcock that I've never seen before. We have The Paladine Case. Uh, Paradine, sorry. I'm speaking, as always, butchering sentences and titles and all that goodness tonight. But uh, 1947 black and white suspense mystery thriller. Most of the film takes place in the courtroom. Uh, it's basically about a guy who is hired by this Paradine woman to help defend her against she supposedly murdered her husband he falls in love with her it puts his life and marriage at stake and it unravels into an amazingly crazy courtroom climax and that's paraphrasing the synopsis obviously i've never seen the movie but um yeah pretty cool plot, uh, plot starring gregory peck the great moby dick of the great Moby Dick, but uh, Antar, Charles Lawton, Charles Coburn, Ethel Barrymore, and Alida Valley, or Valley, from 1947. The Paradigm Case. Never seen that one. Love me some Hitchcock. Next up, we have another one from the Kino Sale. These are all from the Kino Sale, with the exception of La Llorona. Uh, we have The Ice Harvest, amazing cast, John Cusack, Billy Bob Thornton, Connie Nielsen, uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas. So anything, it's a suspense thriller. These guys rob a mob boss. They try and escape. And then they come to find out that uh, they can't trust each other. This is Cusack and Billy Bob Thornton, I believe. So kind of like a heist, thriller, suspense type movie. From uh, 2005. Wow, okay. Whoa, The Ice Harvest. More modern than I thought. But uh, any of you guys have seen any of these movies, let me know your thoughts. And last from the Kino stuff, we have Let the Corpses Tan. Now, I had kind of been on the verge of picking up this release just because I already owned the... There's a German media book or some sort of special limited edition release. But it's big and annoying and just inconvenient, I guess. So I wanted to grab a standard release for, for $9.99. I figured this was the time to do it. I haven't seen this movie, but it's directed by the people behind... Um, 
a mirror and uh, the color of your body's tears, I believe. Yeah, and those are two great like modern giallo films. Um, so let the corpses tan. I think they've done something else more recently as well. But this is actually a western, and it sounds really awesome. It's about these dudes, or this. Uh, I think it's these dudes. Let's see. First of all, it's an homage to spaghetti westerns of the seventies. After stealing a truck, a truckload of gold bars, a gang of thieves absconds um, to the ruins of a remote village perched on the cliffs of the Mediterranean, home to a reclusive yet hypersexual artist and her motley crew of family and admirers. It seems like a perfect hideout, but when two cops roll up on motorcycles to investigate, the hamlet erupts into a hallucinatory battlefield and both sides engage in an all-day, all-night firefight with double crosses and dripping with blood. Based on a classic pulp novel by Jean Patrick Manchetti, or Manchette, and Jean Jean Pierre Bastide. Is it Jean or John? John. J E. It's spelled like Jean, but it's John, I think. Pierre Bastide. Featuring vintage music by Ennio Morricone. Ennio Morricone. Awesome. Uh, and Let the Corpses Tan is a deliriously stylish cinematic fever dream. There's some poo poo on the back of this, or something. Hang on. Uh, that will fire up your senses like buckshot to the brain. The OCD and me must investigate. Yeah, that's a foreign object. Oh, yes it is. There's a poopy foreign object. Maybe not. I don't know. You guys see that? Right there. It's definitely not my poop. But maybe... Somebody from the factory got angry? I don't, I don't know. I'm just kidding, guys. I don't know what that is, but... Who gives a shit, right? The corpse is tan. So, yeah. Awesome. Kino Lorber. And this is the only one that doesn't have, like, the Kino, you know... Signature... Spine. All right. Before we get into the Diabolic DVD package, which is huge, we have Baskin. This movie's awesome. I love this movie so much. If you guys haven't seen this, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, this is actually... Screen Factory put this movie out, but this is a... So Severin had posted a picture of their table at a recent like horror convention they were at. And I saw Baskin, and I, I emailed them or messaged them, and I was like, who... What? Because I didn't know they put this movie out. And they were like, yeah, we released it internationally. So I hit them up privately. And uh, I wanted a copy. Because I'm a huge fan of the movie. At first, when I saw it, I thought maybe the keyhole in this was like... Um, what's the word? Um, I always forget that word. Uh, but you know what I mean. Like, cut out. and uh, But it's not. It's all like the same texture. So, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> anyways... This movie's great. It's a Turkish uh, film. It's very reminds me a lot of Hellraiser. Um, it's just really, really, really good. If you guys haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's about a, like some cops that are summoned to this place where some shit went down, and then it's like a nether world basically where these Hellraiser-like demons are summoned, and it's very hard to watch. Some of the scenes are very like just uncomfortable and cringeworthy in the sense that they just it's what's the word it's um disturbing it really is disturbing some of the sequences in this movie uh but i really enjoy it highly recommend it if you haven't seen baskin and you're a fan of hellraiser um or films like I, the void and baskin were literally like my two favorite films of i think it was what 2015 or 2016 these two movies by far were my favorite so i had to grab this um yeah so stoked on that all right, and now we're going to get into the huge package from Diabolic. I'm still thinking of that word. <laughs> and I can't... Oh, I'm so bad. All right. Oh, come on. So I get like super anxiety when I see that 
like when uh, Diabolic puts out their latest releases, they always have like a, a whole bunch of them because they do, you know, media, German media books. It's not just U.S. releases. So and they always seem to come in like masses. And then I'm a sucker and I end up purchasing more than I should. But yeah, so this is a really big stack of movies. So you guys ready for this? We're just going to go right through. First up, we have a new one from Synapse. Synapse is a great company. They, I just wish they put movies out more often. But uh, this is one I've never seen before. Scott Glenn, Slaughter the Innocents. Um, says, uh, Scott Glenn stars in this exciting, horrifying, edge-of-your-seat thriller from the director of The Exterminator and Shakedown. That's awesome. I love The Exterminator. Um... And the film is from Embossed. Embossed. It's not Embossed. The film is from 1993. Scott Glenn, Sounds of the Lamb, stars as FBI, FBI agent Stephen Broderick, a man who has attained legendary status with the Bureau, of his, for, with the Bureau for his crime-solving abilities. There is only one other person whose abilities rival his own, his young computer genius son, Jesse um, played by Jesse Cameron Glickenhaus. Uh, working together, they are unbeatable team, but they are an unbeatable team. But they may have just met their match in a deranged religious fanatic who preys upon children. Eager to close the case, the police irresponsibly push for the execution of the wrong man, leaving the real serial killer at large. Jesse and his father piece together clues from the past murders and recent events leading to a desperate race against time as Agent Broderick finds his own very own son in the hands of a deranged psychopath. Time is running out and Broderick is the only one who can stop the slaughter of the innocents. For some reason this reminds me of Seven. It's cool. So we have a 2019 product catalog from Synapse. It's nice to have that because all of mine are like 2016 and whatnot. But uh, cool. So yeah, if any of you guys have seen this one, happy to support Synapse when I can. Slaughter the Innocents. Next up, we have the classic Hannibal. Oh, wow. It's a Kino Lorber release. I didn't know that. Um, I thought I had ordered the 4K of this, so I'm going to shoot myself in the foot if I go through here and I find out that I purchased both. I probably shouldn't have opened this, to be honest with you, because if I have the 4K, then I just open this. I'm a dumbass, but I'm not going to talk about Hannibal. It's a good film. I like Silence of the Lambs better, but it's good. Next up, we have um, a Dark Sky Films release. Now, Which this... Phone number, contact, or device do you want to call? Alexa, stop! Sorry, guys. She goes off sometimes. What did I say? Maybe Mega Time Squad, she thought I said. Um, anyways, this movie, when I first... I'm going to be honest. I, I, had, I knew nothing about it, but when I first saw the cover artwork to that, I was like, yep, I need it. I want it. I thought it was a Kino Lorber release for some reason, but it's Dark Sky, which is just as good. Um, well, they're good, but uh, let's see. So, cool disc art as well. Really fun artwork on this release. Uh, so, what this film is about, out of time, without a clue. It's got tons of different um, festival nomination things on the back, official selections. Low-level criminal John... Dreams of putting together enough money to move out of his dead-end town of Thoms, New Zealand and start his own gang. So when his boss, Shelton, has him rip off a triad cash drop at a local Chinese antique store, John decides to double-cross his boss and take the loot for himself, along with a mysterious Chinese amulet. While Shelton's goons quickly catch on to his betrayal, snatch back the, cast, the cash, and try to do him in, John just as quickly discovers the power of the amulet, an ancient Chinese time travel device, and enables him to elude their clutches by slipping back two minutes in time. The catch? It creates a replica, John, a replica John in the process. John is initially delighted by the discovery and sets out to create a small army of duplicates, the Mega Time Squad, to help him retrieve the loot. But this reckless use to create a small army of... Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> but this reckless use 
of the amulet also summons an ancient Chinese demon, and as tensions between the Johns grow, and with the demon and Shelton hot on their tail, the Johns must decide what really matters to save the day and get the girl. That's kind of a shitty, a very complicated, long summary on the back, but it sounds fun, honestly. It sounds like it could be a pretty good film, so... Yeah, uh, it's a long, convoluted plot, but I think I understand it, um, and it sounds pretty good. A lunatic masterpiece as your horror fuel. So I'm actually pretty stoked for this one. I had no idea what to expect. I thought it was probably going to be some sort of 80s Kino Lorber action thriller, but yeah, um, seems a little bit different like that. Doing that little action, little horror little drips and drabs of different subgenres. So that's awesome. Mega Time Squad. If anybody's seen that one, let me know your thoughts. All right, next up we have a new release from Garage House Pictures, who I love. They put out a lot of really obscure stuff. Um, and some films that I had never seen before. Web of the Spider, Intruder. Uh, so I, I like this company. They remind me of Agfa, except their films are a little bit better, I think. But Supercock, I don't know much about this one. Cover artwork kind of had me, um, in, uh, what's the word, intrigued, I guess. Uh, let's see. Seth Calhoun, an American cowboy and his prized pet cock, friendly, travel to the Philippines to enter the first international cockfighting Olympics and for a chance to win 100 grand. But little do they realize their crooked contest is run by the vicious Nono brothers, who will stop at nothing, including cock napping, <laughs> to block the cowboy and his cock from competing. In a race against time, Seth must team up with a comedy double-crosser and woozy WW2 vet to thwart the no-no gang and locate Friendly before it's too late. Directed by underrated exploitation veteran Gus from The Evil and the Swinging Barmaids, put out by, I think, Code Red and uh, Scream Factory. Scream Factory and Code Red. Uh, Triconis and starring Ross... Hagen and Nancy Kwan, Supercock is a fun, fast-paced, action-packed romp through the seedy, cruel underbelly of legal cockfighting championships in Manila. Available in HD for the first time ever from the only known 35mm prints of the film, uh, obtained by Ross Hagen's estate. Interesting. Um, so, it's from 1975. Sounds pretty crazy. Cool. That is super cock. I was going to say cockfight, but I love how they say uh, cocknapping. That's awesome. All right. Next up, we've got a nice one from Arrow Video. The Grand Duel. Stoked on this one. Sorry, guys. Let me know in the comments if you do not like it when I just read, like, word for word the summaries. But a lot of times, I'm kind of learning about these films at the same time. So I figure I might as well just read it to you guys as we go. But The Grand Duel... Um, it is a uh, spaghetti western, very similar to all the other spaghetti westerns that Kino and Arrow has put out. It's a new 2K restoration of the film. I've never seen it, but it's uh, Lee Van Cleef, so you can't go wrong. Um, and there's a ton of special features on this release. I'm just going to try and... There you go. Sorry about the glare. It's awful. I don't know, but yeah, tons of special features. You guys can make that out. I apologize if not. Um, yeah, so nice. And you get reversible cover artwork and a booklet. The first print run, that's kind of cool. Kind of like that, but we'll see. I think I will leave. Oh, cool. And Waterworld. You guys know how I collect these cards, and I don't have the Waterworld card yet. So I'm going to put that in my... Waterworld box set. That's awesome. And yeah, so another spaghetti western for the collection. Awesome. Very nice. All right. Whoa. Next up we have. Ooh, I'm really excited for this. A new one from the archive collection Frankenstein 1970. Boris Karloff. Wow. I'm so stoked for this. Yes, indeedy. So. I'm confused whether or not this movie is from 1958 or 1970, but it appears to be in black and white. Um, is there a doctor in the house? At the eerie House of Frankenstein, the answer is yes. And he's out to make right the experiment in playing God that's doomed his family for generations. Karloff, 
as Frankenstein. Yeah, it's 1958's Frankenstein, 1970. <laughs> a must-see for savvy Fright fans. 27 years after scaring the daylights out of everyone as the lumbering monster in Frankenstein, Boris Karloff is at the other end of the laboratory, switches and gizmos. He's Dr. Victor Frankenstein, an aging, hulking shambles of dignity and menace who agrees to let a TV crew shoot a horror flick at his, the family castle. The crew members don't know it yet, but they're just what the doctor ordered, fresh body parts ready for harvesting. Cool, so I guess Boris Karloff plays Dr. Frankenstein rather than the monster. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think I think, believe that's what it is. Uh, so, yeah, cool, awesome. I'm really psyched for this. Love me some... Um, you know, Frankenstein, classics from the Warner Archive Collection. They've been putting out a lot of stuff, Drac good Dracula movies, Frankenstein, all that goodness. So awesome. I've never seen that, so obviously. All right, uh, this is a brand new one. I don't even think it's released yet from Kino Loba. We have The Night Comes. Don't really know, Comers, sorry. I don't really know much about it. It's 1972. Two children, two adults, one unspeakable crime. Captivating and disturbing, the highly intense psychological drama with its haunting, twisted notion of sexuality puts a new spin on the characters from Harry James's celebrated, celebrated ghost story. The Turn of the Screw, Marlon Brando, stars as Quint... Sorry, ghost story, The Turn of the Screw. Marlon Brando stars as Quint, a gardener who powerfully impacts the lives of young orphans Miles and Flora, Miles and Flora who are left in the care of their governess and housekeeper, Obsessed with the charismatic Quint, the children are mesmerized by his warped views of love and life and soon pattern their own lives after his crude, secret courtship with their governess. When the housekeeper finds out about the lover's relationship, she decides to fire them, leaving the benefit children to take matters into their own chilling hands. Top-notch direction by Michael Winner, who, did direct, uh, who directed Death Wish, and co-starring the great Harry Andrews from S.O.S. Titanic and Modestly Blazed. I don't know. Sounds really good, though. So, The Nightcomers, Marlon Brando. Awesome. So yeah, this one I don't think is out yet, but if you order from Diabolic DVD, you get stuff early. It's one of the perks, other than they're a pleasure to do business with. Um, Alright, next up we have another one that's not out yet, starring Roger Moore. The Man Who Haunted Himself, brand new Kino Lorber release, directed by Basil Dearden. Uh, let's see, 1970. In this creepy psychological thriller, conservative executive Harold Pellman, uh, played by Roger Moore, is involved in a car accident and declared momentarily dead. When he's eventually released from the hospital, Pellman discovers that his exact double has recently been seen in places that he's never been taken over his family, undermined his business, and even begun an extramarital affair. Is Pellman being stalked by the doppelganger with a, by a doppelganger with a taste for the wildlife, or is he simply a man going insane? The Man Who Haunted Himself was Roger Moore's last movie before taking over the role of James Bond in the 007 classics, as well as the final film by legendary director Basil Dearbin, who did Dead of Night, The League of Gentlemen. Awesome. So, cool. Stoked for this one. Rest in peace, Roger Moore. Sir Roger Moore. Um, and I guess the director as well, Basil Dearden. But yeah, sounds awesome. It reminds me of an episode of Tales from the Crypt. Um, I'm Lou Paloma! That's all I'll say. Tales from the Crypt fans will get that, I think. No, I'm Lou Paloma! Alright, and now we have a three film collection from Kino Lorber. Fantomas. Fantomas, Fantomas Unleashed, and Fantomas vs. Scotland Yard. Pierre Sevostri's Fantomas was originally adopted from the screen by legendary filmmaker Louis Falloud. Uh, let's see. Introduced and revamped and modernized version of Fantomas, 1960s OSS 17 and 007 audience. All three films starred the great Jean Maurice as Fantomas, a criminal mastermind and a man of a thousand faces. The three films co-starred Louis de Funes and Le Commissaire... Well, I can't speak all these French names. The first film was released in 64, followed by Unleashed from 65, followed by Scotland Yard 67. All three films are beautifully shot in scope, 
with the first two in Eastman color and the final in Technicolor. Eastman color and final in Technicolor. I'm not a technical guy, but so I don't really know the difference between those. But um, if anybody does, feel free to enlighten me. Um, so yeah, another kind of I think this predates the Bond films, maybe. I'm not sure when the first Bond film is, but it's, you know, in the vein of those in OSS 17, those kind of films. So, cool. Stoked for those. And I think I have one more release, and that's it, guys. So, we'll end this one with a nice media book from the fine folks over at Wicked Vision. I actually don't know who they are, but they put out some really, really nice stuff. Uh, Pete Walker Collection. Number two. Two disc limited edition. And I'm um, trying to remember what we have here. Uh, let's see. The German gets me every time, guys. I'm sorry. And that's obviously one of the downfalls of oh wow shit so it looks like Jesse has loaded up the website once again with a ton of new releases 4k of the witch link is available now on blu-ray wow there's a lot of awesome stuff god damn it diabolic man they just move too fast for me but, yeah, if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, check it out. All right, so I'm trying to get to where this is so I can give you guys a little brief description of it. But it looks like it might be sold out. Pete Walker Collection. Yeah, I think it is, unfortunately. So Sorry about that, guys. I can't really tell you much about this one. But uh, if you're fans of Pete Walker... Oh, here we go. House of Mortal Sin. So this is the uh, Wicked Vision uh, limited edition media book. There's no number on the back of this, unfortunately. Uh, Jenny visits the local Catholic church to have her confession heard by the immoral father Meldrum who is perversely interested in her sex life. Rushing to escape his prying, she drops her apartment keys, which Meltram uses to invade her house and blackmail her by threatening to publish her record recorded confession. And there's only one left in stock. So it's a really good price, though, 40 bucks for this. Uh, so, yeah, this is number two, I guess, from the Pete Walker collection from Wicked Vision. So um, someday I'll do a media book uh, thing where I show you guys all my media books. Um, because I have a bunch of Wicked Visions now as well. These are just really, really nice. I love the artwork as well. So, guys, that's it. Thanks. I've been chatting for a long, long time. So, bye. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.